Today, we're talking all about dudes. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, as you know, we've got this little hiatus period between all the different patient shoots that we have. So I'm picking up on a totally different topic and it's something which I get asked about a lot. We see a lot of men in the clinic, especially after the YouTube videos that I've been doing on men. And you guys are thirsty, you want knowledge. And I am here today to drop some bombs in your ears. So the question is, first of all, why are more men considering having facial aesthetic treatment? Well, often I hear it's because they wanna be more competitive in the workplace. Maybe they've got these young whippersnappers nipping at their ankles. Uh, another reason can be, you know, personal life changes. Maybe you're getting divorced, whatever. Uh, and then just increased awareness of the treatment. So you'd be surprised how many times I get a patient saying, I didn't think about doing this until, I don't know, I saw the article or I saw this video. So most of the characteristics that we associate either with men or with women are kind of innate to us. We kind of innately know what makes a face more masculine or more feminine. Or do we? And that's what I'm talking about today. Uh, interestingly, men have got more vascular skin, so are apparently more likely to bruise. And they experience facial aging in a different way to females. For example, uh, men experience a greater downward shift in the lower eyelid with age. There's also a thicker dermis and epidermis and less subcutaneous fat. Hence, the wrinkles look a bit different. On a man, you'll have fewer wrinkles, but they'll be deeper in general. And for those of you who are into skulls, the female skull is approximately four fifths the size of the male skull. That's because we managed to compact all our brain into a smaller area, thus being more efficient. So let's talk about some individual anatomical points. This is just, you know, a few different collections of interesting things that I thought you might enjoy hearing. So on a man, Botox. Generally, you need to use more because of the muscle bulk is larger. In addition, the muscles which here are responsible for frowning extend a lot more laterally on a man. So often you'll need to increase the dose, maybe to even 40 or 50 units in the frowning area. The eyebrow, as I'm sure you're all aware, sits quite a lot lower on a man on top of the orbital rim and is a lot more horizontal and straighter than on women, which is why we have to drop our Botox dosing lower to prevent this happening, which is not cool. But also because some of you guys out there are experiencing some androgenic alopecia or hair loss here, we also have to be sure to blend that up into the hairline to make sure that you don't get any big lines and creases across here. The under eye area loses around 40% of its volume through aging and the temple loses about 23% of its volume. So both of these two areas are really crucial to treat. People often look at me weird when I suggest that we add volume in the temple, but it makes the brow appear more horizontal and also gives a bit of lift to the lateral part of the eye and even the cheek. Speaking of the cheek, uh, there's a study which shows that if you have a narrow cheek width, it makes you look less trustworthy. Think somebody who's got like a slim, skinny face and it was all snaky. Likewise, having a wider distance between the cheeks indicates higher competence. And the reality is that people do infer certain personality traits and characteristics according to how we look and how we present ourselves. Hence, around six months ago, half the internet thought that I was making up my medical qualification because I was wearing common people clothing. The ratio of the medial and lateral cheek in men is different to women. So for example, in a man, it will be 1.1 to one, whereas in a woman, it will be around 1.5 to one. The apex of the male cheek tends to be wider, uh, more medial and is more subtle. So there are a few different ways to identify where the fullest part of the cheek should be. And I shall proclaim them forthwith. 
So the first was uh, invented by Hindra. So we draw a line from the lateral oral commissure. So first up, we've got Hindra's line, uh, which takes the lateral oral commissure uh, towards the lateral iris, stopping at the orbital rim. Sorry about my terrible drawing. And then the base of the alar of the nose over to the tragus. Wilkinson's line. So we've got a vertical line down to the edge of the mandible. Okay, oh my God, my hand is so shaky there. And then that's about a third of the way down, which it looks a lot more realistic there, don't you think? That one's better, better on him. I don't think there is just one way, though, to calculate this. Um, I have a different way of triangulating, uh, which I'm sure you've probably seen before, and I use this mainly when I'm doing my fillers. It's kind of like this. And then I typically use this area here as being the, the point of the male of prominence. Um, I don't think there is a right or wrong answer there. Anyway, let's move on. So let's take a look at the side profile now. Uh, and we've got Riddell's plane, uh, which is dropping a line from the upper lip to the lower lip and the chin. And the anterior projection of the chin should touch this line. And then a chin neck angle of 130 degrees is optimum. Onto the nose. With age, the nasal tip can drop when smiling. We can use a bit of Botox in there to prevent that. Ideally, the nasolabial angle should be 97 degrees as opposed to 104.9 in females. The radix in a woman is 115 to 125 degrees with the superior slope starting at the lash line. A masculine radix begins higher, uh, closer to the superior tarsal fold, a bit of the eye, uh, and blends into the glabella. When speaking about the dorsum of the nose, uh, this should be straight in a straight line from the radix to the tip. Uh, women have a more sloping line. You all already know the five principles behind making a man look more attractive or unattractive, whatever floats your boat. But I think it's important to discuss the more social aspects of it as well, which is something that we haven't really touched on yet on the channel. I have said before in my videos that I'm not a huge fan of using Botox in men, particularly in the upper face and around the eyes. And the reason for this is because socially, it's a lot more acceptable for men to sport this more distinguished look. When men look older, we tend to think of them as appearing to be more wise or more mature. Whereas on a woman, it doesn't really evoke the same kind of social response. There have been some studies to show that male faces are thought to be more attractive uh, if they are more masculine than the average. However, there are also conflicting studies showing that more feminine faces are preferred. This is because faces with more masculine features tend to increase perceived dominance and also have more negative perceived attributes such as coldness or dishonesty. By the same token, extreme masculine features indicate high testosterone levels, which are associated with more troubled relationships, including high rate of divorce, violence and infidelity. Therefore, male attractiveness is likely a balancing act between making the face appear more masculine and more feminine. From an evolutionary standpoint, this may reflect masculine characteristics being associated with dominance and having a strong immune system. However, also characteristics such as minimal paternal involvement and poor relationships. I think the key here, guys, is regression to the mean. So you don't wanna make the face look too masculine, neither do you want to make the face appear too feminine. And going back to what I said before about men looking sexier when they do have a few lines and wrinkles, let's take a look at the top 26 sexiest men. In at number one, we've got Jamie Dornan, famous for 50 shades of gray, but famous in my heart for appearing in the fall. Number two, Idris Elba was hoping that he was going to be the first black James Bond, wasn't to be. Number three, Henry Cavill. I actually genuinely did not know who he was until I saw this. 
Number four, David Beckham. Now this is a good case in point because if you think about David Beckham when he was in his 20s, he was a bit meh. Number five, Ryan Gosling. Big fan of Ryan Gosling. He does that whole empty vessel thing really, really well. Number six, Ryan Reynolds. Excellent choice there, ladies. I do like a man with a sense of humor. Number seven, Bradley Cooper. Not sure what to say about this. I have seen some images recently of Bradley Cooper uh, having had treatment done. I think they did a good job. Number eight, Jake Gyllenhaal. I have seen him in the flesh once and he was very tall. Number nine, Robert Pattinson. I haven't seen him in the flesh, but I hear he's very short. Number 10, Pharrell Williams. Don't know, I think his music's good, not my type. Number 11, Tom Hardy. Bit odd. Uh, I hear that actually he's quite posh, but does this whole bit of rough thing quite well. Number 12, Johnny Depp, classic. I've covered Johnny Depp in a previous video about male facial aesthetics, should you wish to see it. Number 13, Hugh Jackman. He seems like a really nice guy. Number 14, Zac Efron. Don't know, he just looks a bit sort of classically bland to me. Uh, 15, George Clooney. What can be said? I mean, he's a great director, right? Uh, number 16, Harry Judd. Genuinely did not know who he was before I saw this. Still don't know. Number 17, Gary Barlow. Really? Number 18, Gerard Butler. Again, did not know who he was. 90, James Franco. Okay, we're just getting ridiculous now because I don't know who he is either. 20, Taylor Lautner. Who is Taylor Lautner? This is getting stupid. 21, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt is number 21. Are you guys insane? 22, Orlando Bloom. No, not for me. 23, Justin Timberlake. Okay. It's a little bit 2000s. 24, Ollie Murs. I have heard of him, did not know what he looked like. A uh, tiny temper in at 25, what the heck? <laughs> and then Anthony Joshua at 26, he is tall. And you know what they say about a tall man? They need a lot of extra material. That's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comments, if you want to have a go at me for not knowing who these people are or saying that I'm wrong about uh, my taste in who should be number one, which is obviously Ryan Gosling, uh, then let me know in the comment section below and I will see you again next week. Bye.